Hello, dear viewers! Welcome to part 97 of Madness Project Nexus Arena Mode. I bet you're wondering what we'll be doing today, especially based on the title of this video, am I right? In the previous episode, I asked you, the viewers, what kind of battles you would like me to set up in Arena Mode. I got a few suggestions for those, so we're gonna start off with them. Only a couple of you guys submitted suggestions for that, by the way. Thank you. But we're doing viewer stuff first, so let's take a look at the list. First up on our list is the AAHW versus the Bandits on Pit Stop. I can do that. Also, while we're at the beginning of Pit Stop, I want to show you something very weird. If you go over to this door here, you can see it's all boarded up, correct? I mean, of course it's correct, you're looking at it. If you teleport inside of it somehow, it explodes! Only once, and then your character is stuck, as though this was an exit door. Another interesting side bit here is that this whole building actually has stuff in it that you would never see, including this propane tank. I don't know if it actually works or not because I have no way of act actively shooting it. Another interesting side bit that I found is the entire right side of this level has more details than you'd ever be able to see. Like, there's this whole yard out here with a mechanic shop, and you just never even get to see any of this. You can't even see the mechanic shop, it's so dark over there. The left side doesn't hold too many details beyond a dumpster, some pallets, and what looks like to be ramps for the AI to get up and into the arena. Alright, so here we are on Pit Stop. Now, a few things to go over. I'm going to start with six units, as though they're a full player squad, because you're allowed to have yourself and five hirelings. So, six units total. Number two, always going to be on Madness Difficulty. I contemplated leaving the HUD off for this, but then you want to be able to see how many enemies are left. The two agents and the engineer have already been dispatched by the bandits. However, the engineer and soldat seem to be doing rather fine over here. It's single bandit coming in by himself to be a hero. He just became a corpse, not a hero. And these guys, as long as they stick together, they're fine. But those agents and the engineer who went in by themselves got destroyed. And like th those two guys are doing right now, actually. Well, another agent's down. All that's left is a single engineer and Soldat. The Soldat just ran in. Oh! His tack bar means that he pretty much can't be shot to death. However, he will be slapped to death. He's on his last legs here. Ooh, and there goes the Soldat. It looks like the only one left is the Engineer here in the middle. They still got 30 enemies to go. Engineer here now has to deal with a zombie and a dude with a gun. And it looks like he was overwhelmed. And that is a wrap. They got 30 enemies left and they couldn't do it with just six guys. I guess we'll have to see if 10 shall suffice. Now we have 10 AHW units against the bandits. Can they do it? They're already sticking together more as a group, which results in them being able to kill stuff a lot more quickly. I guess that's English. Of course, one of the engineers has already been murdered. The swarm is over on the left, which seems to be a good call since that's mostly where the bandits swarm in this map. Lost another agent over on the right. Over on the left is going strong, no casualties thus far. The guys over on the right seem to be in good health though, assuming that's the enemy's blood. Scratch that. Moving over here to the left, we have one agent down. The soldats are still fine. And we have our first zombie. Let's see if this agent can beat it. He's doing it. There it is. Back on the left here, it looks like one of the engineers has been killed. The agent who was able to take out a zombie got killed by another zombie. But the soldat avenged him. Looks like the left is down to two soldats. Let's check up on the right. It looks like the other agent is dead and it's only the engineer left. Back on the left, it's the two soldats. The bandit brute showed up and it's just gonna finish them off, huh? 
The only ones left are this single engineer, the bandit brute, and the zombie. He's going in for the zombie. He's going to make sure that at least the zombie doesn't survive. There it is. Well, they almost did it. 10 AHW units could... I mean, I guess you could say they beat the bandits, just not the zombies. Now get off my stage. Now we'll do this one more time. So now we've amassed a horde of AHW units to take on Pit Stop and see if they can do it. We have a gross total of three soldats, six engineers, and seven normal agents. Let's see if they'll be enough to beat the cretins that spawn here. They're all swarming on the left because that's where the movement was spotted. Over on the right, we have two engineers and an agent, and one engineer in the middle is holding point on the objective. The agents on the left are using overwhelming firepower and manpower. Now that the gun-wielding bandits are jumping in, we're going to start to see more casualties than normal because they'll be able to fire a bullet or two into the crowd of enemies that they have to deal with when they walk into the arena. That agent taught that bandit the meaning of police brutality, and he's not a cop. Another zombie has gotten up. It's being euthanized just as quickly. And oh, a bandit got a lucky strike on an engineer and took out his freaking head, I guess. And a single knockout punch on that engineer. These two bandits gang up and kill the agent. Bandit throws a rock. Engineer dodges it, however, it kills the agent. Two zombies dogpile that engineer, turning him into a zombie, and this soldat just puts them all down. The bandits over on the right are trying to break open a barricade to free their friends. There's seven left, so it won't matter in the long run. So we only have a few enemies left. Oh. Um... This isn't supposed to happen. Soldat runs in and gets his head taken off with a single punch. Engineer runs in. Gets the other bandit. And the big guy is focused on the wall here. He clearly is trying to kill me. Oh, that engineer didn't stand a chance, but he finally enraged him. Here we go. Let's see, can they get him? Oh, crowd control. Soldat's going in. Arena victory. And he did it! They celebrate with a group nap. Ignore the mustard and ketchup packets they spilled when they fell over. Huh, that was interesting. It took an overwhelming amount of manpower for them to finally be able to do it, but I guess that's what the AHW is for. Second on our list, the Sheriff and Mercs on Fast Track, specifically Endless Stage 3. Oh, I know what's on that one. All right, here we are on room three of Fast Track Endless. The same rules more or less apply. I'll start with six units, same as a player squad. We'll be on madness difficulty, and if they don't have weapons, well, I'll spawn some in and hope they get them. Oh, here we go. The sheriff is trying his damnest. But the gunners are making quick work of everyone else. Oh. Guys on the left have already been mopped up. But they just can't seem to kill all of them. The sheriff is still being bullied, however. The sheriff is down. There goes the merc captain. 35 enemies. Something tells me that they wouldn't be able to make it through all of them. Regardless of how many there are. Here we go. A mishmash of tons of gun-wielding mercs. Let's see if they stand a chance against the remaining 30 enemies. They're just getting bullied. Look at him. Of course, as long as that guy isn't finished off, he'll get back up into the fight. Another big guy down. Captain's being bullied. Sheriff is also being bullied. Sheriff kicks a dude into a corner. Taking out the soldats. They got 10 units down now. The units on the left have already been dispatched. It's just these three captains sticking with the sheriff. 
they're getting there. They're getting killed is what is happening. Oh, oh, the mag did not care. The mag is here to clean up. Oh, they didn't even get a chance to fight the mag. I guess let's see how they fare against the mag itself. Merc is here on the scene. A single mag agent. Guy in the back dodges a shot. Unfortunate for him that he aims at the one guy that can dodge. Oh, he's getting close to losing a single corpus. Hasn't lost a corpus yet. Oh, he lived that. I don't think that man's gonna live that. Nope, he's down permanently. Oh, the mag grabbed the sheriff and put a bullet straight in his chest. One of the captains got grabbed and euthanized. It's fine though, he'll walk it off. Oh, another one of the gunners is down. There goes a physics object. Another corpus on the mag agent down. He's trying to finish off this gunner, I believe. Oh, the gunner gets back up. What happens when we don't finish him off? The sheriff got grabbed again. Another captain is down. Oh, he's down permanently. Oh, the mag agent is now dead. They did it. Celebratory nap for everyone. So from the looks of it, I don't think Mark stands as much a chance against the AHW as we thought. Maybe nobody thought that. All right, back to the list. Zombie Swarm Nexus Core. Okay, I like where you're going with this. I'm in the void. We're going to start off with the max amount of zombies I can spawn at once. You can see, they kind of get annihilated. The only guys that got a kill were the ones over here in a large group. There we go, the conflict's starting. And it's just about over the moment it began. See, these zombies are rather weak. Like I said before, the zombies in Project Nexus, well, they don't stand much of a chance against anything. The only purpose they serve is to grab you and annoy you. So I made my own zombies. These guys have more health. They also have slightly more damage. But when they're being shotgunned at point blank while laying on the ground trying to eat a Tootsie Roll, well, they get destroyed anyway. Only one man sees the zombie party and will not stand for it. These corpses shall not party anymore. He's just getting swarmed over there. His friends don't care. He's dead. They don't even get to grab him and convert him. They just kill him too quickly. I don't think these super zombies are able to clear out next core facility as much as I thought they would be able to. Also, I apologize with the sound being so out of whack here. I can't help it. It's how the level's designed. This zombie engineer is going to put in some work. I wonder if his armor means anything. Well, he just lost his face, so I don't think it does. Ooh, single zombies left. And he gets lit up like a Christmas tree. This one agent eats a guardrail. And that's all the zombies cleared out. These guys stand a pretty good chance against an undead invasion. Surely the golem will be able to kill all these zombies because they can't actively get him. Zombies absolutely destroy golems. Huh, that's not what I was expecting. Now then, let's see if the Nexus Core can handle Zombiezilla, who's effective at team killing his friends. Look at that. They are trying their damnness to fight him, but they just keep getting knocked off the edge. That man got burned to death by acid. Rapid fire, rapid death. The mag zombie is losing some health, but the question is, 
how much health can he lose? Oh, there's a soul dad in the mix now. There was a soul dad in the mix. And he's down. Just a few zombie stragglers left. A single zombie remains. He's being bullied. And he's dead. Looks like the zombies, even with the mag zombie, couldn't beat the Nexus Core. Kind of expect the Nexus Core are highly trained, highly equipped soldiers, after all. Next in our list is just more Rook Gudgeon. Okay, okay, I know what I want to do with this. Oh, here's a quick little f side fact. This door right here for the Rift, it works. As long as you teleport to the other side. Let's see if a Rook Gudgeon can beat the pilot episode, right? Oh, first zone is clear. They roll up in their motorcycles in an attempt to stop him. Alas, they cannot. Uh-oh, they're too close for him to hit. What's he gonna do? Get killed. It looks like madness difficulty is not for the Rook Gudgeon. Let's drop it down a little bit. All right, here we are again. Let's see if the Rook Gudgeon is normal difficulty material. They take a few more hits, but he can also take a few more hits. The difference is they don't attack nearly as fast, and he has the same attack ring. Will he avoid the traffic in the third zone? Oh, he almost got hit by it. The final outside section, the Rook Gudgeon is going to make a mess of everyone. Went to the inside. These guys stand no chance against the Rook Gudgeon. Just wait until he shoots them. Yeah. <laughs> wow, he actually managed to kill a few guys before the elevator got down. <laughs> And that's all of them again. The Gunch is just moving in. Sweet Tony is not caring. What are you waiting for, Rook? Shoot him! Shoot him, Rook! He's getting cold feet. Oh my god. Look, the Rook Gudgeon has completed the pilot episode. Let's see how he fares in the goods. <laughs> oh. The Rook Gudgeon has never encountered cover before. He doesn't know how to aim up. Interesting. Now for continuity's sake, let's say the Rook Gudgeon was smart enough to aim up by three inches and move along. Well, looks like the Mafia aren't standing much of a chance against them either. They just walk up and get obliterated by them. And he meets his end from a double barrel to the face. Let's say the Rook Gudgeon was able to make it inside to where the first dual-wielding mafioso is. How does the Rook Gudgeon stack up to a man dual-wielding Thompson submachine guns? Fairly well. These guys didn't even get a chance. Okay. More of them flood into the room. Oh, and the Gudgeon is dead here, too. Since we're already here at the chef battle, can the Rook Gudgeon take on all three chefs? Of course, by himself, he might be able to. However, his friend the Moosher has showed up. It's not like it matters. These guys are getting mulched with one shot. The final step on the Rook Gudgeon's journey, Fickle Friends. Yeah, that'll learn ya. The Rook Gudgeon is so fast, he is in four places at once. You know, something tells me that this isn't how this scene is supposed to go down. The Rook Gudgeon versus Sweet Tony round two. It's the matchup for the ages. There he goes. Sweet Tony is no more. He got gudgeoned. 
The audience is taking a supreme beating. Moving on to the lounge. Let's see how fast the Rook Gudgeon clears everyone out. The Rook Gudgeon seems to prefer shooting civilians, which doesn't really help him here. As you can see, he's now a charred corpse, desperately trying to kill the civilians, even in the afterlife. Wait, hold up. You're telling me that there's actually an animation for someone this small doing a finisher on somebody. I didn't think there was an animation like that in the game. Rook Gudgeon versus Vampire Freaks. Oh, he can do finishers too. Just mopping up the Vampire Hunters as well, simply because they're here. They seem to be trying to team up on him, but he doesn't even care about the vampires. He just puts them down. Oh, here we go, the ambush. Let's see how the Rook Gudgeon gets out of this one. Big guy's dead. See, can he get... No, he couldn't. They pinned him in a corner. I don't think this is how it's supposed to go. Um. Huh. All right. Next area. I decided that the Rook Gudgeon should have a twin. Gudgeon Rook. Which is which? I don't know. They're twins. Ignore the gambler. He really likes to watch. Gudgeon did not care for that man whatsoever, huh? With the two of them, they can crossfire each other and provide covering fire. Introducing a second Rook Gudgeon to the mix means that we have more than doubled the damage output. Why do I say we've more than doubled it? Because they can now shoot enemies that are attacking each other. Uh... Vehicular manslaughter. Everyone is killed by Doc. Including the Gambler, I might add. You know, I know he lost his medical license. I think he lost his normal license, too. Since Doc killed us all, and I'm looking at the time now, I should probably stop before I run out of time. So, I guess next time I could do some of the stuff that I wanted to do. Or, you guys can leave more suggestions in the comments below, and I'll do them for episode 98 and 99. So that wraps up this episode quite nicely with all the viewer suggestions done. All four of them. Anyhow, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and take care. I'll catch you next time.